All right, hello, this is Stephen Sadler reading to you again from Money and Power, The Secret History. There's also a course at moneyandpowerbook.com. By the way, if you want to get the whole overview, you like to listen in your car, I've got six talks. But today I want to talk to you about energy specifically, the consumption of energy. If you think about it, really we developed electricity around the Industrial Revolution. So since we've been creating electricity, uh, the last 20 years, think of all the energy that's ever been used, more than half of the energy that the world has consumed, it has consumed within the last 20 years. So there's a rapid rise in the demand for energy and that's primarily due to an increase in the standard of living of people in third world countries. China being the best example, they had a billion people down at the poverty level and in the last 20 years these people are entering the middle class. They want electricity. They're living in better houses. Soon they're going to have cars and need petroleum. So this infrastructure development is placing a lot of demands on world energy consumption. So China is rising, is now number one energy consumer in the world, second to the United States. The U.S. had been the largest consumer for, for many years. And now India, too, has a very rapidly growing middle class and more energy consumption is going through the roof. This puts more demand on uh, petroleum development and alternative resources which are developing. Still to date, almost all the energy that's being consumed in the world is being uh, using some form of what's called a fluoro hydrocarbon. That is some material that is combustible, it burns and it ends up leaving pollutants in the air. And uh, this, this may contribute to global warming, as you well know, but e even if you're not concerned about global warming, we all have to breathe this dirty air, which is harmful, so that it behooves us to clean up our act and look at renewable sources since this resource is going away. But still, oil represents 33% of all energy consumption in the world. Coal follows it by 27%, so almost a third and a third. And the other almost a third, 23%, goes to gas, so between oil, coal, and gas, you've got the majority of energy consumption around the world. Now, nuclear accounts for about 6% of the world's energy, biomass 4, hydro 3, solar still under 1%, uh, depending on who, who you're talking to and trying to get accurate data, but it's rising very rapidly. It's ri rising by over 30%, and once we have these new materials that can be like sprayed on as a paint or put on a, a filter on a window, uh, we can start utilizing what we've learned about solar. There just hasn't been the economic advantage to do so, to put it into full production on a mass scale. Wind is our greatest example. Right now it's still, it's been less than a half a percent of all energy consumption, but it's growing at a, a giant rate, almost 1.3 percent of global now, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but General Electric has finally came out with a wind turbine that can produce electricity cost-effectively. In the past, Wind was something that only made sense because we were kind of subsidizing it to get the technology going. Now we have a technology that makes an economically viable source of energy for at least electricity. You still need petroleum for plastics, fertilizers, for many other uses, and realistically we're going to need petroleum throughout the rest of all our lifetimes in these next generations. But we can make a tremendous difference using alternative energy such as wind. Wind could supply in the next 20 years literally all the electricity we need in North America, for instance. This has been proven. But the problem is we have these giant cartels for oil that whenever any um, legislation or any movement to look at other sources that would compete with oil come to play, to, pay, to play any serious role whatsoever, these large cartels and lobbying interests just bury our Congress. So very little has moved forward. Barack Obama, to his credit, had opened up um, wind resources. I hope we follow through because it, it's one of the, the great hopes for the future for regenerative energy. Now I also understand there are some secret projects, zero point energy, scalar waves, other kinds of renewable energy resources have been discovered but they're not in commercial development yet. So the push is on for new technology, new development. And that's exactly what the United States should be doing to grow our economy again. We should be investing in these new technologies. That's my suggestion. What do you think?